introduction about me. My name is Marcel Poziot. The name is pretty hard to pronounce. I'm not French, even though it might look like it. Um, I'm managing partner and developer at a company called Beyond Code. I started it in December last year, so it's very new. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter if you want. That's my Twitter handle, um, where I'll be talking about PHP development, chatbots, all sort of things, or ramble about gaming. Um, when I'm not working at my company, which, as I started it in December, has become quite rare, I actually enjoy doing a lot of open source work. Um, well, it's not completely true. I also enjoy spending time with my family. And I thought about adding a slide here because I just started playing PUBG. I don't know if anyone knows this game. I just wanted to st tell this. It's awesome because I started realizing I'm just too old for Call of Duty kind of games, and all these 17 years will just uh, defeat me there. So. Uh, but nevertheless, I do open source quite a lot because I just love giving back to the community. We do a lot of use a lot of open source tools in our daily life. Uh, as developers, I have somewhat around 30, 40 or 50 open source PHP packages around with close to a million uh, downloads. And uh, so just want to encourage you, if you want to get started with open source, just do it. Get started with it. There is no kind of losers in there. Just publish your code, and you will definitely learn from other people. Um, and another quite popular uh, thing is the Laravel Test Tools Chrome extension. Just want to quickly uh, talk about it's a Chrome extension that lets you record the actions that you perform on your website, and it generates um, a Laravel test code out of it. So when you click on it, uh, it generates the code for you. I know it's not TDD, but it uses uh, 15,000 people use it weekly. So it at least helps to create more tests for software, which is great. And um, it's also available for Codeception. All right, chatbots. They're not all as evil as the T1000 here. Plus, he wasn't that chatty. But um, so. Let's take a look at the definition of a chatbot according to Wikipedia. So according to Wikipedia, it is a application that is conducted by a computer program. Um, and it either uses some audio information for input or textual information. And on the Wikipedia side, it also says that uh, this software passes the Turing test. So those of you who don't know what it is, it's a test to for a software to behave like a human being. Um, but my definition of it is it's just an interface that you can use to access your application. So it's nothing more. You can just think of it as somebody talks to Alexa and this triggers a specific part of your application or someone in, uses uh, Facebook or Telegram or Slack. So it's just another interface for you um, to use your application. And to give you some examples of what bots are like, um, because what I, what I experienced is a lot of times people think that chatbots should be these super intelligent artificial intelligence machines that you can ask any kind of question and they understand what you mean. Um, and I think we're not there yet. So um, a lot of use cases that you probably knew in your day-to-day -day life is Slack. So uh, this, for example, is a Slack bot that I developed um, for our company. It allows me to use Laravel Forge. For the, those of you who don't know what it is, it is a server management system. Um, and it allows me to create a new site on one of my servers. Um, so in this case, it creates a test site using the webshop Laravel uh, repository. I can just uh, say that in Slack. The chatbot will pick it up and create a new database for me, create the server for me, create the site, clone the repository, install composer dependencies, everything. And it just, once it's ready, it will just give me the URL uh, and I can browse the website. And so this is cool because it saves me a few minutes of my time because with this, this is just one minute if you know the right syntax for the bot. 
um, which would otherwise take around 10 minutes. But the other thing is that it informs everyone in my team who is also on the Slack channel that I just did that and that I created this website. So it's also about sharing information. Um, this is also another bot that has some kind of more natural language approach to it, uh, which pulls out the DNS information for a specific domain. Then there's a huge market for brand marketing with chatbots. So this is an example from TechCrunch. They have a chatbot on Facebook. And when you talk to it, it allows you to uh, subscribe to specific RSS feeds. So when you talk to it, it will say, OK, which of these topics interest you? And then you can subscribe to the most popular uh, feeds on TechCrunch. And every day at a specific time, which you can also choose, you will receive an overview of the, I think it's the top 10 articles of that day. And TechCrunch will send it to your Facebook Messenger inbox. And I use this quite a lot because it's not as spammy as newsletters, I think. Um, and as I'm using Facebook Messenger anyway, it just feels more natural to me. I just added it uh, this morning. When I was visiting London yesterday for some quick sightseeing, I saw that the Travel for London, TFL, they have a travel bot on Facebook. I just tried it real quick this morning. Uh, it allows you to view the, um, the times when your bus arrives, and it allows you to check the status on some lines. So the whole self-service um, market is also very important for chatbots because it lets users interact with your application or your service on the messenger services that they already use. And then chatbots are just fun. So this is just an example. I built an Alexa uh, skill that allows me to deploy to my uh, websites with my voice. So this is what it sounds like. Alexa, ask Laravel Forge to deploy botman.io. Deploying botman.io. Ship it. While this is not ex extremely useful in daily life, I just build it because it's really fun to interact with Alexa and let it deploy my website. Plus, I couldn't find the, uh, the updated chart of this, but the timing is just right. So starting in quarter one of 2015, the number of users in messaging apps increased compared to the number of users in social networking apps. So there's a huge um, user base just waiting for chatbot applications to get on their messaging services. OK, so we talked about chatbots, and they can be fun and used for self-service. So let's build our own chatbot. We, we're developers. We can do this. Ah, OK. This looks a bit weird on this resolution. So when you start writing your own chatbot, there are a lot of services available that you can choose from. There's Slack. You can use Nextmo for SMS, Twilio for SMS, Skype, WeChat, Telegram, you name it. So they all have the ability to add chatbots to it. So you first have to choose which service you actually want to use. Um, and to show you how chatbots work in general, this is like a brief chart of it. So you go, for example, let's use uh, Facebook. You go to the Facebook developer site, create an account. And then you can just use webhooks. So when someone writes your Facebook application, it, Facebook will then send this data to the webhook you provided. So this would be your bot application. And there you have to validate the incoming data. So is this actually a command that my chatbot should listen to? Um, you maybe need to check for existing conversation state. So if the user previously talked about getting a bus, and now he says something completely different. Is this still related to the previous conversation? And then you have to respond back to the messaging service. And while this works pretty much this way for all of these services, it's very different in detail. 
So for example, Facebook sends JSON payload to the webhook with a very weird structure. Um, WeChat, for example, sends XML, a raw XML body. Um, and when you want to respond to these services, you also, uh, for Slack, for example, it's enough to send just a return 200 response with some JSON. For Facebook, you need to make an API request. For Skype, you need to get an OAuth token and send this back. So it's not easy to get your chatbot once you've developed it and you chose Facebook, for example, and then your client comes and says, OK, now we want to get it on Slack too. You have to do it all over again. So that's what, why I developed this uh, little library. It's called Botman, and that's the cute-looking logo. Um, it's framework agnostic. It, you can pull it in in uh, a Zend application, Symfony, Laravel, um, or without any framework at all. Uh, you can require it via Composer. Or um, it also comes with a few additional features using uh, Laravel. That's just because I like the framework, um, which is called Botman Studio. But you don't have to use that. You can just use it uh, in your framework of choice. And so this is one of the features that automatically come with the uh, Laravel integration. So it has a command that shows you the available drivers that you uh, can, can, can connect your chatbot to. So on the previous chart with all these messenger services, um, with Botman, it allows you to abstract your chatbot logic. And then you can just say, OK, now I want to connect my chatbot to Amazon Alexa. Then you pull in the driver, configure it, and you're good to go. And this is what the installation would look like on uh, Botman Studio. And if you would use it without a framework, it's just a composer require. And you have to do two additional steps. And every driver, for example, Facebook, comes with a configuration that's uh, hopefully good documented, uh, where you see what you need to do to get your driver up and running. So this is really all you have to do if you want to add a new driver to your chatbot application. So the fundamentals of a chatbot are it needs to hear the incoming message from a user. It needs to process them and understand what the user was actually trying to tell you. And then you need to respond to the message. So let's just look what this is like with Botman. So, this is the most basic example of using Botman. You just, it has a here's method, and there you just paste a keyword. And you then have a closure as a second argument. And so in this way, you structure all the commands that you want to listen to. Um, or if you don't want to use a closure, you can also use this class, namespace, class, at method syntax. And once you've defined all the commands, you call a listen method. And this is uh, what will be behind the webhook URL. So since this presentation is actually running on top of Botman using a web driver, I can just try this out in the, uh, in the presentation here. So if I type keyword, it replies, hello, my friend. And with this exact code, if I just hook in the Telegram driver, this is what it would look like. And this is the Facebook implementation. So it's all just connecting, configuring tokens, um, and it just works with the same code base. And of course, you're not limited to just send one reply. So if I type tell me more, I get two replies from my chatbot. Um, so since you are able to use multiple messaging services, you might want to uh, group the commands that your chatbot can listen to for multiple messaging services. So for example, if you use Nexmo with SMS, you might only want to listen to specific commands that make sense for SMS. And if you use Facebook Messenger or Slack, you have different commands that you want to listen to. So this group method with Botman allows you to do just that, 
that you say, okay, group all the commands for this driver um, inside of this closure. So it allows you to structure your code. Now, hearing to just static keywords is fine, but at the end of the day, we probably want to retrieve some input from our users and extract parts of what the user said and use it in our application. Um, the easiest way to do this is with curly braces around a parameter. And um, so in this case, we have call me and then curly braces name. And then in the closure, we get the botman instance. And as a second parameter, we get the name. So what the user entered after call me. So I type call me Marcel. We will call this method with a botman instance and the name, so then we can just reply, hello, whatever was said. Or this is also not limited to just one. Uh, if we have I am name, the adjective, then these parameters will just add, get added to the closure in the order that you specified them. So I am and of the gray. Um, these curly braces are really just for getting everything. If you want more control over what you actually want to listen to, you can just use regular expressions. So everything that's in a regular expression matching group, like the 0 to 9 plus, will gen just get passed to the closure to the variable. So if I type, I am 32 years old, which I am, you get got it, your age is 32. And if I would type, um, I am 30 years old, then we get another response. I have no idea what you're talking about because it will not jump into this closure. You can also, depending on what messaging services you use, listen for incoming attachments. So for example, with Facebook or Telegram or Slack, you can just send images. So there's a receives images method. It gets the botman instance and then an array of images that the user sent to your chatbot. And the same can be applied to videos or audio. And some services, like Facebook and Telegram at least, uh, also support to send the current location so that you can listen for the location data from your users. Uh, you just saw that when I typed I am 30 with uh, just letters, um, that you can also define a fallback method. So this is the method that gets called when none of your here's commands match the incoming information. So if I just type some random garbage, I will go into the fallback method. Um, if you want to store some user information, Botman has a very simple user storage. It's underneath, it's just a JSON file uh, with the data in there. Um, so if you want to cache it, you better be using database or Redis. Um, but it's, it allows you to actually just store the information. So this is what the code looked like in the I am whatever age years old example. Uh, we replied it, and then I saved this in the user storage. And this means that when another user on Slack, for example, talks to my chatbot, then the user storage is automatically bound to the user that interacts with my chatbot. So uh, it's not shared across users. And to retrieve uh, items and keys out of the storage, I can just call a get method and get the age back. So if I now type, how old am I? It returns the value. And beside the user storage, there's also a channel storage. So this is useful for messaging services that, has, that have the concept of channels or groups. Um, the most popular would be Slack, where you have different channels, but also for um, services like Telegram, where you have group chats. Then you could use the channel storage to store 
information that is then scoped to this channel or to this group. And if you use multiple uh, drivers or messaging services, you can also store information scoped to this specific driver. Botman also has support for events. So for example, on Slack, there is a team join event that you can listen for. So every time someone joins your Slack team, you will then get the event fired. And you could add a simple bot that will greet everyone that joins the team. Facebook has, for example, events for message reads. So every time someone reads your messages, you get an event, and you can do whatever you want with it. You receive the payload from the messaging service. And uh, another example would be Telegram. It has a left chat member event. So in this case, we say goodbye to the user, but he already left the channel. Anyway, it will work. Um, OK, so up until now, we just replied text. But uh, again, depending on the messaging service, you can also reply rich media, like messages with attachments. So um, to, you do, to do this, you can just create an outgoing message class with some text. And then you can say, with attachment, and then attach, in this example, an image with a URL. So if I type, give me images, we get a reply with an attachment. Same for videos. Again, it depends a lot on which service you use, if the service supports videos or images. So this obviously wouldn't work with uh, SMS. So give me videos. I turned myself into a pickle, Morty! Boom! Big reveal! I'm a pickle! What do you think about that? I turned myself into a pickle! All right. Pick a rig. Um, and if you want to make use of some driver specifics, you can also do that. So um, you're, in this example, Facebook has a whole bunch of different templates that you can use. So you can create a list template. So the list template is part of the Facebook driver that you pull in. And with this, you can create a response, which is then a list with two elements. One is Botman documentation. And this is all part of how Facebook uh, deals with it, with a subtitle and image and specific buttons. And then you can reply those templates. So this is what it would look like for uh, Facebook. Now, if you would uh, reply this template on some other messaging service, it wouldn't work, because this then just generates a very specific syntax that only Facebook understands. Or uh, to give you another example, this is a button template also from Facebook, where you can create a button template with uh, two buttons here. One is a postback, so when you click on it, your chatbot could listen to the value, and the other is just a URL. And this is what the button template will look like on Facebook Messenger. OK, let's order some pizza. So uh, and not really, but our chatbot could probably now understand to order some pizza. So the user could say something like, I want a large cappuccosa with extra cheese delivered to the brewery. And it's super easy. We can just create a super funky regular expression um, and then listen for it. This would work, but it's probably not what we want to do because our chatbot users need to know that they have to write exactly this. So the solution is just, if you think of it uh, in real life, when you want to order a pizza, you call the delivery service, and you start a conversation. So he asks you, what pizza do you want? You answer, then he asks where to uh, deliver it to, and then you give another answer. And the whole conversation concept can also be applied to Botman. So in this example, we hear for the trigger keyword, which is, I want images. Then we jump into this closure, and there we are going to ask which images. And we're going deeper into the rabbit hole, so another closure. 
which will receive the answer and the bot instance. And there we are just getting the text from the answer and then use lorem pixel to output the um, image. So give me images. Uh, I want images. Now ask me which images, and of course, we want cats, so we get cat images. And the important thing is that once we are inside of this ask method and the bot asked us the question, even if we would reply to something that is another here's command, the chatbot would just skip it because it knows, okay, we are currently in this conversation. Now, with the pizza example, uh, this could get a bit ugly because we have multiple um, questions nested. So for this, there's a conversation class, which on one hand allows you to reuse conversations throughout your chatbot application, and it is also a lot better to structure the code. So a conversation class is just a regular class that extends the base conversation class that comes with Botman. And it just has to implement one method, which is the run method that gets called when the conversation gets started. So if we stick to the pizza example, the first question that we're going to ask is, what pizza size do you want? Then we get into the closure, and we will save the answer as a class property on this conversation class. And then the next thing we would do is we will just call another method on the uh, conversation class. So we would call ask, call ask topping. We will ask what kind of topping do you want? And then again, we will store the answer in the topping, um, in, uh, the topping argument. And then we will ask for the address. Um, so this is in the ask address method, and there we will just dump out all the information that we stored in the class properties. And to trigger this, the uh, botman object has a start conversation method where you can just pass in an instance of the conversation class that you want to use. So I want pizza. What pizza size do you want? Say large, what kind of topping? Let me just clear that. Salami, I want it delivered to the brewery. And then we get all the information that we have. And once again, we're just with the smaller conversations that just have the ask method, every answer that is given inside of this conversation is bound to the scope of this conversation class. Now, this is quite good with the conversation, but now we allow every information from our users. So someone could say, I want a pizza that's the size of a wagon wheel, but maybe we don't have wagon wheel size pizza. So what we can do then is um, we can also create question objects with buttons. And these buttons can have a label. So in this case, we create the, qu the question um, object, what pizza size do you want? And we add two buttons, one with the label super size, and when we click on it, we can retrieve the value, which would be XXL, and one button with the label large and the value L. And I called this better pizza, and this is what it will look like. So we now have these buttons. Uh, I want some hamburger on my pizza. <laughs> and we can get it delivered to the brewery. So um, maybe you noticed that there was still the input field, and if you run this on Facebook Messenger, people could still type whatever they want. But you can check for that in the, um, in the ask closure. So there you could check, OK, was this answer really a button click? And if it's not, you could just repeat the question with some different text or something like that. And this is what it would look like on uh, Telegram. So you have these two buttons there, and this is how Facebook renders it. 
Okay, so um, another approach to pizza ordering, if we stick with it, would be natural language processing. Natural language processing means that we have a sentence like, hey, calendar, schedule dinner with Nicole at 8 p.m. tomorrow. We then send this sentence to a service, and this service will return some structured information back to our application that we can then use. So in this example, we would get the result that the intent of this sentence is to create a meeting, and this intent has a couple of entities. So the name of this create meeting intent would be dinner with Nicole. Invitees would be an array of just Nicole, and the time would be tomorrow at 8 p.m. There are a couple of uh, services that are available for natural language processing. Um, there are also more than these three. API is um, now called Dialogflow. Google acquired it. There's Wit AI, which is built into Facebook. And there's Raza, which is my personal favorite because it's open source. It's Python, and you can just run it on your local machine. So you do not need to send every message that you receive to some uh, Google service to, to uh, process it. So it just remains on your service. And uh, this is a screenshot from Dialogflow. So this is what it would look like if you set up the whole natural language processing. So it works like this. You give it a few sample sentences, how users would interact to trigger the pizza intent in this example. So people could say, I'd like four cheese pizza. Or can you make me small margarita and deliver it to whatever address? And then you go into the sentence, you mark, for example, the small, the text, click on it, and then you can say, okay, small is an entity of the type size, and when this gets called, I want it to be in a parameter that is called size. And the same with type or address, uh, which is a pre-configured entity from Dialogflow. So you do not have to... Um, enter all the available addresses, so these services automatically detect, okay, this is an address, I'm just, I just know that it's an address, or a country, or a zip code. Things like that are built into these services. So once you configured all these uh, example utterances, you can then use this um, natural language processing in your chatbot. And with Botman, um, this is through, done through some middleware system. So we can create a Dialogflow middleware uh, in this example with a Dialogflow token, and then we say we want to listen for actions. I will explain this in a bit. And then we say, okay, every message that your chatbot received will go through this middleware because we need to send every incoming message to Dialogflow to determine, is this actually an, in, an intent that we want to listen to? And then in our here's method, we can just say, OK, we want to listen for order.pizza. And then we can tell the here's command, OK, but only listen to it using this middleware. So if someone just types order.pizza, this will not work, because the text order.pizza would be sent to Dialogflow and not return the intent that we want to. And then we can access these uh, parameters that were added from the middleware using the get extras method on the incoming message. So I have Raza NLU running locally, so I can do something like I want a large salami pizza with, I don't know, Onions. And then this sentence will be sent to my local Python uh, Raza NLU service. It will get analyzed, and I then get back, OK, the type is pizza, the size is large, and the topping is onions. Or uh, I could say something like, I am hungry. Give me a medium margarita with extra cheese. And then this also gets processed. And these services are uh, smart enough to, to be um, 
these sentences that you send to them, they don't have to exactly match these sample sentences. So if they just differ a bit, it will still pick up the, um, the arguments from this sentence. Um, another very useful feature of Botman is that you can originate messages. So uh, when you think of Slack, this would be just be a notification. So you can notify someone on Slack or Facebook or SMS with some text, uh, which is nice. But the real benefit is that you can also originate conversations. So for example, let's say there's a PHP conference in London. And after the event, we want to notify everyone uh, on Telegram or Facebook and send them a conversation where they can give feedback um, in Messenger. So all you need to do is you have to get the, uh, the user ID first. So the people need to interact with your chatbot in some sort of way. Um, but then you can just originate conversations and send them out. Testing uh, is also added in Botman. It's a feature that most of the available chatbot frameworks don't really care about because testing chatbots is quite hard. Um, and with Botman, at least I tried to make it pretty simple. So um, this is just the PHP unit test. And there we say, OK, the bot receives the message test, and then we assert that the reply is hello. And it comes with a whole bunch of different methods that you can use to receive tags and assert replies, assert that the reply is in an array, uh, that it's not a specific kind of reply, that it's a question or some kind of Facebook template. So there are a lot of more uh, of these testing helper methods that you can use when uh, developing chatbots so that it really is possible to, to use TDD when developing a chatbot. Um, I talked just briefly about the middleware concept in Botman, and I think it's one of the most powerful features of the library because it allows you to hook into the various parts of the chatbot lifecycle. So this is what the, uh, the whole lifecycle of Botman looks like. <coughs> so when you call the listen method and someone sends you a message, Botman will get the incoming message from the driver that is matching this me message. And you can hook into this using the received middleware. So this is, for example, what we do with Dialogflow. We get the message, send it to some third-party service, add additional information to the message, and then it goes into the next part. Um, next, we check, is the user currently in a conversation? And if that's true, then we can call a captured middleware. So it's sort of like the received middleware, but only for um, inside of conversations. And after that, the active conversation will be loaded. If we're not in a conversation, we have the message matching. So this is the actual regular expression matching. It's the text that we send, the same text as the regular expression. Does it match? And you can modify it too. So for example, um, as we did with dialog flow, we not only check for the regular expression, but we also check if this is actually an intent from Dialogflow. Or if you have uh, messages on your chatbot that you only want to listen for when the, an admin of the Facebook page sends it. So um, maybe you have some admin commands to list users, delete users, uh, things like that then um, you can write your own matching middleware to check for that. And there's a heard middleware, which is basically the received middleware, but it will only get called when the message was, uh, was actually matching. Then the closure or the class method will get called. And you have a sending method, which you can use that gets called before the message payload will be sent to Facebook or Slack or Telegram. So you could lock the outgoing data, manipulate it, do whatever you want with it. And this is how you would apply it. Just a basic example, a logger middleware, it will lock. So we, we say we want to apply this middleware to all messages that we send and to all the messages that we receive. 
Um, and Batman ships with, I think, 10 drivers for all sorts of different messaging services, but you can also create your own. The documentation has a part of it um, which describes how you can create your own driver. So if you use, um, for example, in your company, some messaging service that is not yet supported, you can just create a, a custom driver and use it, or even um, use different protocols. So um, I started working on an IRC driver, but stopped spending time on it, but it's also possible. Uh, okay, I think we have some time for a super quick demo. Can you see the code in the back? Probably not, right? Should I make it bigger? Yeah? Better? Okay, so uh, this is a service that's called Botman Playground. It's currently in beta, but um, what it will do is it, let me just refresh, so I'm logged in. It allows me to quickly try out a chatbot. So I have this code editor here, and underneath I have this web widget that I can use to try the chatbot. So um, if I would say botman, here's hi, and we go into the closure. And there we're going to say bot reply. I PHP conference, UK. So if we try this and type hi, we should get the response. OK. Uh, so since a lot of the speakers here rely on feedback, I thought it might be a cool idea to just build a quick demo of a chatbot that you can use to rate this talk on Telegram. I don't know. Uh, quick hands up, how many people have Telegram here? Okay, quite a few. Um, so what we're going to do is, when you connect something to Telegram, you have a get started button, and when you press on it, Telegram will send a slash start method, a uh, message. So we will use this to start the conversation, which is new app conversation. And in this conversation class, we have the run method. So uh, I'm going to create a question. How did you like this talk? Then we're going to add buttons to it. So uh, let's say thumbs up, and the value will be good. And another button that has thumbs down. Nah. All right. Um, and then we're going to ask this question. So it's this ask question, and we get the answer. Um, and I'm just going to store it. So this rating equals to answer get value. Sorry, uh, I still I need to connect it <laughs> in a minute. Uh, so since I stored this property, so let's say rating and text. So we save the rating, then we're going to ask, is there anything else you want to tell me? Get the answer. Store it as the text property. And in here, I'm not using get value because it's not a button click. So I'm just using get text to get the textual input. And then I'm going to say, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the conference. All right. So if I haven't fucked this up, uh, I should be able to say a slash start. 
Oh no. We got something. Oh no. That's the instance. Ah, uh, that shouldn't be an issue with the array. Oh, yeah. I need to add syntax highlighting there. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. OK, so I can click on this. Is there anything else? Nope. OK. Um, and then I have my Telegram token here. So I can then connect this thing to Telegram, paste the token in here, press connect. All right. And since I want to see what you are using this for, I also have a super small snippet to send this anonymously to a server of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not accessing any user information here. Um, OK, so this should work um, if we open this in Telegram, press start. All right. Nope. OK, cool. So just real quick, because I'm a bit running out of time, this is how you can create a super simple chatbot with Botman in, I don't know, five minutes. Um, OK, so this is all I have. You can find the whole Botman um, library at botman.io. There's also the link to the GitHub repository as it's open source. Uh, the bot that we just connected is called Botman Talk Feedback Bot. Or you can use this link if you want to try this out right now. And uh, if you find the whole concept of chatbots interesting, I launched a video course on the whole topic at buildchatbot.io um, last week. So you can check this out as well. Thank you. <laughs>